Tennis for Two is likely one of the first video games ever created. It was first shown in 1958 at the Brookhaven National Laboratory during an exhibition and was played on an XY oscilloscope screen with one potentiometer and one button per player. One year later it was shown again in an improved version and remained mostly forgotten for the following years. The game simulates a tennis match with a basic playing field with a line in the center as the net and the ball is actually affected by gravity pulling it down as a basic physics simulation. The original game was a fully analog circuit made mostly from transistors and relays which was very modern technology at the time. The public schematic is believed to be different from the actual game containing some errors and fixes and many unmarked components making an original recreation very difficult. For now the goal was to recreate the experience of playing the game to make a playable version for an exhibition, so I'm going to use a modern microcontroller with integrated DAX to keep the complexity low. Apart from the really impressive analog recreation of the Museum of Electronic Games and Art, there is one other notable, much simpler implementation of this game for Atmel microcontrollers using an 8-bit R2R resistor deck that can be built using common Arduino boards. While it is working quite well and is responsive in terms of gameplay, it is still far from period correct anyways, considering the original game is from the late 50s. For a weekend project I can highly recommend trying to recreate this as it is Arduino compatible and great for learning analog signal generation and optimization. The main issue with this implementation is that you can clearly still see the 8-bit resolution with discrete steps in the movement of a ball and lines, breaking the illusion and making it obvious that it is a digital device. And it also lacks some of the special features and rules of the original game. The resolution issue can be improved by using a faster 32-bit processor and a higher resolution DAC. A 12-bit DAC for example allows for 4096 steps for a truly modern 4K experience at a high frame rate of possibly 100Hz or more, exceeding even the original analog frame rate of supposedly 36Hz. I chose an STM32L151, which might seem like an odd choice being quite slow but it is a small, low-cost, low-power chip with two 12-bit DAC channels and a 12-bit ADC, which I already had available and that's all we need for this project. Many other chips like the F3 series are pretty much pin and peripheral compatible and could be used instead. The limited RAM of only 10 kilobytes will make this a challenge to optimize for performance and resolution. The circuit has footprints for two optional potentiometers, and buttons for a compact demo systems or connectors for external controllers like the original and it is also powered via USB or 5V. An integrated op-amp amplifies the weak 3.3V DAC signal to 5V and it also has two LEDs to show on which side the ball currently is. The controllers are just one potentiometer and buttons each and connected to the side of the mainboard. In this unit I have used 3D printed cases, but in the exhibition actual metal boxes like the original will be used. On the software side I have experimented a bit to find the best solution to draw the playing field and ball and the best option seems to be to use a short cyclic buffer with DMA pushing data to the DAX and either filling this buffer from the playing field stored in flash or a dynamic buffer drawing the trail of a ball from RAM. The deck is triggered using a timer as well as the game logic and updating and swapping the buffers to be drawn. The actual logic of the game is partially based on the Atmega implementation, but instead of drawing out dots directly in the game loop, it runs at a lower rate and only updates the ball position once per cycle into the dynamic buffer and generates the trail. Additionally, the tennis rules were adjusted a bit to let the correct player serve the ball after a point and based on the original game a smash function that accelerates the ball hard at low angles was added. This makes the game much more fun and challenging to play. The game update and buffer swapping is independent of each other and can be tuned separately for the best performance and visual appearance. Currently this game is in the Highscore Arcade and Games Museum Hanover 
using an HM207 oscilloscope with a nice green trace and it can be played by visitors, so try to check it out if you are in the area. And lastly, I want to thank my supporters on Patreon who support this channel directly. Links to the code and schematics of my version and references to the other mentioned recreations of this game are in the description.